More bad news on that front. His dad is going to be uh, your wife. I know it. He's totally against you moving in. What? That's insane. You're 38 years old. Why are you even listening to him? He's my dad. I can't just shut him down without hearing him out, babe. Look, let's see if we can handle things differently with your dad this time. Ask him to come over and talk to me. Geezer to geezer. Thanks, man. Yeah, and I'm Paris's aunt Jackie. You must be oh, Jesse. Oh, it's so sweet of you to bring beer. It's really refreshing to see somebody who doesn't show up to the door empty-handed. I just brought these for me because I didn't know what kind you guys have. You get used to something you want it all the time. It's kind of like your favorite pickle. <laughs> I get it. I like Gherkins. You can put one between your cheek and gum and have your own secret little treat. Well, I will leave you men to talk about your pickles. <laughs> I'd say, but uh, I have an appointment with my psychic. All those mom was a psychic. No, wait, psych, psych, psychotic. I get those confused. <laughs> That's the kid's dad. Why don't we take this in the kitchen? I'd be a bad host if I let you drink alone. Yeah, you would. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you had that kind. I'll take one. <laughs> I'll put these back in my truck. My gas gauge doesn't work, so I like to have emergency walking beer for when the truck stops coasting. <laughs> Good plan. <laughs> oh. I hear tell you don't think it's a good idea for Harris to move in with your son. No, I think it's a terrible idea. She's not the right woman for him. Hey, you got anything crunchy? <laughs> Just our milk. Listen, you and I have been alive long enough to be a good judge of people. Harris isn't just some irresponsible dropout. She pays rent. She's got a steady job. She's a solid person. The way I see it, all those damn lucky to have her. I didn't say she's bad. Said she's not right. I'm a roofer, Dan. Like a lot of roofers, a couple bees chased me off a two-story into a wheelbarrow full of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Were the bees mad because the story didn't have a point? I'm getting there. I'm a storyteller, Dan. Anyway, <clears throat> a man needs a woman he can count on. And all those mom, Marlene, she was there for me after the accident. She taught me how to read and write and play harmonica again. You're a lucky man. <laughs> Must have been before she went psychotic. No, that happened right after I slept with her sister. <laughs> I told her, I told her it was dark and, and they're pretty much the same height. <laughs> She came at me with a rake anyway. You never know what's going to set a woman up. <laughs> but bottom line is, what you and I think don't mean squat. Harris and Aldo are adults. You can't tell them what to do. Aldo's not an adult, Dan. It's painful for me to say this because they never set my jaw right. <laughs> but he... <laughs> is a 38-year-old man-baby who still likes to jump up and down on the bed in the morning. He still wipes his booze clues. <laughs> he never fell off a, a roof or nothing. That's just the way he is. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. Harris isn't the problem. You're saying Aldo isn't mature enough for her. That's exactly what I'm saying. You heard about the first wife, right? Oh, and she was a drug addict. Not at the beginning. The woman had a master's degree. When Aldo and those creepy kids were done with her, she was smoking rock under a bridge, talking to her foot. <laughs> <laughs> if you give a crap about your granddaughter, you gotta get her out of this. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. I know it must be hard for a parent to see their kids the way they really are. I'll talk to Harris. Good. Good. Um, can I siphon some gas out of your lawnmower to get home? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I don't have a lawnmower. All right. Uh, why don't you just give me 10 bucks and we'll call it even? 
How about this? You give me 20 and I'll owe you 10. <laughs> I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> Sorry, I know we spent a lot of time detailing the Maserati, but unfortunately we're not going to race slot cars today. As I just found out, my dad convinced your grandpa we shouldn't be together. When he should have worked it out with me, Dad. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm embarrassed, and I really don't appreciate you butting into our lives. I was attacked by bees. You don't scare me. Okay, I think we all need to sit down and have a respectful conversation. So everybody shut your dumb old pie holes and listen to me. First of all, watch your mouth. I'm not dumb. Second of all, my hole also enjoys cakes and donuts. I'm sorry, sir. My father should not have come over here and told you that I'm some kind of loser who's going to screw up Harris's life. I'm looking at this differently, son. I just don't think Harris is ready to take on everything you've got going on. Can everyone stop talking about me like I'm not in the room and making decisions about my life? I can speak for myself. Sure, but I just don't think you ought to be playing mother to three kids. I only have two. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> How hard do you really want to fight when this is the prize? <laughs> I'll show you how hard. I don't care what any of you say. I'm moving in with Aldo and the boys, and it's going to be great. That's right. Harris is moving in with me, and it starts now. And I don't need anybody's approval. How'd I do, baby? You did great. Yes. Let's get the rest of my stuff. <laughs> well, Dad, it looks like you and me are probably going to end up being in-laws. Yeah. <laughs> and now my boy's mad at me. I don't have any place to stay. And uh, since we're practically in law. I hear you, Jesse, and if I didn't like you so damn much, I wouldn't be offering you this here beer for your walking journey. <laughs> hey, thanks. One will get me out to the porch, two will get me out of the yard. <laughs> See ya. I'm going up. Going up. Going down. He's going down. Going up, down, down, up. <laughs> I think he needs a better amp.